Let's welcome Andrew to the benchmark. So yeah, I'm Andy Halliday. My talk is about, can you hear me all right, yeah? Stop thinking and start doing. Um, just a little bit about me first, so. One second, sorry. So I've been in search marketing now for about four or five years. I used to be the head of SEO and PPC at ebuy.com until late last year. And then Satsuma Loans decided they wanted to get into SEO and approached me to go and join their team. So I decided to take on a brand new challenge. I actually got into what is now SEO about 12 years ago when I was in A-level. I had to create my first website and I used to put white text on a white background. I wish it were that simple these days to rank in Google, but it's not. Um, I usually speak at conferences about there's very technical stuff, so I'll speak about server log analysis or something very, very technical. But when I was asked, I was only asked to speak here yesterday, um, so this presentation has been done in 24 hours, so it's not my most polished. But when I was asked to speak, I was told I can't speak about my technical stuff; it has to be more general and broader, and that gave me the idea of well, what can I speak about. So I thought I'd talk about something that I experienced a few years ago about how I used to come to conferences and do things and never actually deliver on any results. So this, is, this talk's all about stop thinking and actually start delivering results. Um, so yeah, that's me speaking at Brighton SA earlier this year. Sorry, the, my notes were off with one. And um, I also want to thank Emma Mew because they actually taught me how to because that's where I went to university a few years ago, about, and they're one of the main sponsors here today. They taught me about how to create and design and present a presentation within 24 hours. It's either that, or the fact I was very lazy at university and enjoyed the nightlife and left everything to the last minute. I'll let you decide. So my talk today is about getting stuff done. I've got two examples I want to get through, so I'll dive straight into them. The first one is you come to conferences, and you hear a load of great speeches, and there's been some very interesting stuff today which I've learned, I'm going to take away and try and implement. But you, there is a lot of information. And the problem is, if you go and go back to your work, I'm going to say tomorrow, but we might be a bit hungover. So we'll delay that till Thursday. So you go back into the office on Thursday, and you go to your boss. I came to this conference, and I learned these 10 wonderful things. I'm going to implement, implement all these 10 things straight away. Um, he's going to be really happy. He's going to think, oh, I'm going to get some great ROI from him attending this conference. But in reality, you can't actually deliver 10 things. What you really want to do is actually think of three or four super crucial things that you've learned today that you can implement quickly and have the best ROI. Because as soon as you start implementing, breaking them down to three or four things and start implementing them quickly, your manager's gonna see the results and therefore you're gonna get um, great ROI back to the business. Your manager's gonna be happy because they've seen return on investment, the number's going up, the owner or the MD is going to be happy. So everybody in the business is going to be happy that you've come to this conference because you've shown great ROI. And when you're implementing these strategies that you've learned today, always mention you got the idea and the knowledge from the conference. Because the next time you go and say to your manager, I want to go to a different conference or I want to go back to the same conference next year, you don't have as much hassle. You don't have as much fight back from the business saying, why you should go. My first conference back was in 2015. 2014, with Search Love London, and they invested £3,000 for me to go to that conference. I stayed at a nice five-star hotel, etc. Um, I kind of took the piss slightly, but hey, if they're paying, who cares? And, but then I got back, and I again went in and said, oh, I've come back with these 10 great things I'm going to implement straight away, and I actually didn't deliver anything. And it was about six weeks later, the MD called me into the office and said, that £3,000 we spent, it's not really um, returning anything, you've done nothing. I was like, I've got all these ideas, I'm going to deliver anything. And he sat me down and said, but you've not delivered anything. You've had six weeks and you've done nothing. So now when I go back from a conference, like when I go back, like I said, probably not tomorrow, probably Thursday, I'll go back with just three ideas, three simple ideas that I can implement straight away. So they could be, well, we don't be on brand PPC. Um, stuff from that we've learned this morning or anything you've learned today and I'll implement them straight away over the next coming weeks, and the next time I want to go to a conference, all I've got to say to the owner, the MD, is I went to that conference, I learned some great stuff, 
here's the ROI, here's the things we've implemented, but more importantly, here's the difference it's made to the bottom line of the business. And at the end of the day, they only really care about the bottom line and making more profit and more revenue. So if you can show the difference between going to the conference and the improvement, it makes it a lot easier for you. And also, if you only show them two or three things, if you go to a really bad conference and you learn nothing, or you've, it might not be the conference is bad, but you might have not read the agenda, or it could be that you thought it was an advanced conference and really turned out to be a, aimed at junior people the other way around, you can use some of your ideas from a previous conference. Your boss doesn't know actually when you learn this stuff, unless your boss is here with you. So that's why I do. I have some stuff in the banker for future conferences. And the other thing I want to talk about is to-do lists. I used to be a big fan of to-do lists, but now I hate them. I used to have a nice color-coded 50-page to-do list. Um, this is when I was going to start doing something. This is when it was going to be finished. But the problem was I was spending too much time on to-do lists, making them look pretty. Before I got into SEO, I was a data analyst, so I, could, I can make Excel do wonderful things. I can make it change color depending on what I do, move to different tabs. And I used to spend so much time actually creating my to-do list. Again, I never got anything implemented. So I've now gone to my to-do list for the week is three or four items, never more than four, because I know I can get them things delivered straight away. And again, I'm bringing value back to the business because I'm delivering ROI. I've never ever gone into, Google doesn't wait for you to start getting to your bottom of your to-do list before it starts implementing its changes. It does three changes a, a, a day. Your devs, while they might want to sit around for two weeks playing World of Warcraft or the new Pokemon Go, they actually need work to do now. So it might take you two weeks to write your to-do list, but they need work now. So you need to be thinking of quick things, looking down your to-do list, scrapping it all off apart from three or four things, and giving them stretchy devs to work on. And also, whenever I've been into my quarterly bonus reviews, my six-month reviews, my probation reviews, whatever, my boss has never gone to me and said, Andy, you've got a lovely to-do list here. Here's your bonus, or you've passed your probation. It's always been about, have you hit the numbers? Have you delivered what you said you're going to deliver? And if anyone's got a boss that actually says you can have your promotion or you can have your bonus based on a pretty to-do list, please let me know because I wouldn't mind that being my boss for a change. Stick with to-do lists, as well as doing them yourself, you should also, and sorry if there's any agencies in the room, but if, you've got, if you do work with an agency, challenge your agency. When, when you start working with an agency, they'll give you a 50, 100 page technical audit of the website, and they are the most boringest documents I've ever seen in my entire life. Nobody reads them, they, they become a doorstop, they come around to your office, they see them on the floor, and they're not happy because they know you're not reading them. So instead, say don't give me them 20 to 50 things to do, just give me three or four things that's going to give the quickest return on investment. And then that's going to do two things. First of all, it takes responsibility off your shoulders from reading the whole entire document. Nobody wants to do that. And second of all, they usually know what will deliver the quickest investment. So if you can get them to give you the quickest things, you're going to grow. This can be organic or PPC. You're going to grow that channel a lot quicker and deliver better return on investment. So the business is going to be happy. They're going to be happy with the agency because the agency is delivering results. You're going to be happy with the agency because they're delivering results and it makes you look good. Um, everyone in the business, the devs are going to be happy because if you give a dev a list of 50 things to do, I can tell you for a fact now because I've worked with devs long enough, they're going to pick the easiest ones they want to do, no matter if it's high, medium, or high, low priority on there. They only care about what's quickest for them so they can go back to playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's all they care about. So if you just give them three or four things and say, here's your three things to do, go away and do it, they've got no excuse. They've got to do them three things. And Google likes to change its mind. About six weeks ago, they announced that the third biggest ranking factor on mobile is going to be page speed. Now, if your devs have already got a list of 50 things from you to do, they're just going to say, sorry, I haven't really got time to look at that. Come back to me in a year. I'm like, no. Google doesn't wait a year. Google's going to deliver this in the next three months. Whereas if you're giving them three or four tasks at once, when they get to the end of the task, you can just say, I've only got one task for you now. Fix a mobile page speed. So basically, you can get the developers to do the items you want to do and not what they want to do. Again, when you're speaking to your agencies, instead of you having to go through a list of 50 things that they want you to do, and it takes an hour for your phone call, because you're going task number one, Dev's not started. Task number two, 
Nah, devs might start next week. Task number three, nah, maybe next week. Task number four, got no chance for that one. You can just say, we've got three tasks. Task one, devs are halfway through. Task two, devs have almost completed that. You're, you're okay tomorrow to check that. Task four, it's done and released. 10 minute call instead of an hour, so you're getting more time back to actually deliver more stuff. And if you've got more time, you can, like I said, you can deliver more stuff, create more value for the business, create more revenue, everybody's happy. And this also goes internally as well. So if you've got, I, I don't work with an agency, all my work is done, I'm responsible for SEO. So I have to deliver, I have to do the crawls of the website, etc. And that might spit out 50 things that's wrong with the website. I'm not gonna give that 50 to my thing, so I will then look through that, look through the list of errors and work out three or four. So it's not just giving an agency to you a small list, you've then gotta give small lists out because then if that's to your technical team, your content team, your PR team, the small list they are, the quicker and easier they'll work through them. And everybody likes a small list because once they get to the bottom of a small list, they can see that they've done something. They can, everyone's happy when they get to the bottom of the list, they feel good. And as soon as they can start delivering on these results, as soon as they can start seeing the benefits, you're gonna have a lot more easy conversations with them. Nobody wants a hard conversation with your dev or your MD because your results aren't coming quick enough. But if you turn these lists over quick enough, your results are gonna start happening. So when you get back to the office, like I said, it's probably not gonna to be tomorrow. Unless you don't drink, then it might be tomorrow, but just get some shit done. Just actually go into the office and work out, look at all your notes from this conference, look at your three or four things you've learned, and, and say these are the things I've learned today. They're what's gonna be implemented, and how long it's gonna take. Now, once you know your list, go and tell your developers why you want to do it. You've only got a list of three or four things to do. If you've currently got a big Excel list of, or a note list that you've got to do, I'm not gonna say destroy it, because there probably are important things on there, but just go through, pick your three or four things that you do wanna, that are really super crucial that you need to get done ASAP, and create a new to-do list. So keep the other one back so you can keep referring to it once you've done your, your new list. But don't use your current long list. And again, don't worry about, it's the same for strategies, don't worry about creating a huge, super long strategy that's two, three years down the line, because things change. I only saw this morning that Google's now decided, or currently testing, getting rid of the star ratings in AdWords, so they show a percentage like, you don't know what's around the corner, so you could create a strategy that's two years long, spend a month creating it, a day later it could be out of date. So rather than spending ages creating these lists, think about a smaller, more actionable to-do list. And that's it. Thanks. Anyone got any questions? <laughs>